So now we are going to do the short teaching on the sadhana. Um, uh, if uh, if your time and situation permits, and and you're most likely literate, and uh, you might find your ability to learn to read may be better use, not just reading a, a kind of a, a comic or something, but read something very useful uh, that has a profound purpose to benefit sentient beings. So, um, so it's because this Manjushri uh, sadhana is uh, belong to Kriya Tantra, preferably all the Kriya Tantra practice should be done early in the morning, uh, particularly before you eat any uh, meat or, uh, or seafood or drink any alcohol. Of course, this best is a good practice. Good Buddhist practitioner should not have any of these. But uh, should uh, you uh, have a habit of still having them, then you should try to do Manjushri uh, practice before consuming any of those. So that's a time, time when uh, when you should practice. And um, so one who has received the Manjushri empowerment uh, should uh, should do the uh, uh, should do the uh, sadhana, if possible, uh, daily, if not at least periodically. When the main thing is not so much uh, uh, of, um, of doing some reading every day that has no meaning. It's not like that. The reading is so that you remember the right view uh, in your everyday life, so that you actually are, are armed with the awareness uh, how to not to do ill will and how to do not to do clinging. And uh, not to do clinging doesn't mean not to do clinging, but not to cling to things that actually is not there in the first place, let alone that is what there might, it may be there, but it's no longer there. The, you may you have seen a cloud, but uh, if when you turn your neck on, then the cloud's not there. You know? so, so it's not so much of the reading the prayer every day. It's not, that's a superficial, that's most basic commitment. The main commitment is, purpose of that is to remember the right view. You know, remember the right view. The right view means that we are often holding wrong views. We are often holding wrong views, thinking appearance as real, thinking the uh, snake, thinking the piece of rope is a snake, and then get alarmed and shocked and running to death. You know? People are often mis misunderstanding each other, misunderstanding permanent, impermanent things as a permanent, not truly existing as a truly existing, unsatisfactory things as a satisfactory. These are the wrong views. These are the wrong views. We think somebody said this, did this. No, they didn't. It only, it's only you thought they said. You thought what they said. They didn't mean it. See, that's the wrong, we have to write our wrong views. So the Manjushri Sadhana is for you to remember how to write the wrong views. Not the, right, the wrong views of other people, to write the wrong views of ourselves. You're not even you, forgive, forgive. you're not even your name. It's good to tell that to yourself. And, and you're not your name, you're not the race, you're not your culture. You're not your profession. You're not your position in the job. These are the right views. These are merely labeled. This is just a this is just a little role you play in office in the game of samsara. These are not right. These are just these are just temporary. This is just a small play we do each day. Don't take any of them literally. That's a manjushu. The word manju means gentle. Shri means glorious. One who has the right view is gentle, is tame, is glorious. He doesn't hear things that people say is truly existing. He's gentle. He hears other people's aggression as, as emptiness. Other people's praise as emptiness. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> if not emptiness, Transparent, in a tra you know, transient. They will praise you now, but next moment they don't want to praise you. So don't don't get attached to praise. Even if they 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 abuse you, 
they will not be able to be a position later. You know, they, 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 they have no idea. So, mm, you have to remain gentle, manju. Manju means gentle. Gentle means devoid of the roughness of the wrong views. You know, you, we are so rough, we are so aggressive with the wrong views. So, youthful Manjushri, you should ever remain youthful and remem remember, you, you have to always freshen up, don't you? You have to always freshen up yourself with the right view. That's Manjushri. Manjushri is not a tall Indian guy, you know, you're hiring as a guard or, or <laughs> protector. Manjushri doesn't live in Utaishan, I tell you that. Manjushri is ever present in your heart. You might go to Utaishan, the five-peaked mountain, but that's just a, that's just a tourism, Buddhist tourism. <laughs> It's okay to go to Wutaishan. I'm not suggesting you shouldn't, because I have been myself to Wutaishan. Mm. You know, after all that long trip, I thought, oh, is, is this where the Manjushri is? I said, no, no, this is, this is, a, this is a pl blessed place where Manjushri has appeared to the practitioners. And if I have the pure perception, I will see wherever I am. So with this, I, I relate to Manjushri this way. Manjushri is too gentle, to tame your mind, devoid of roughness. Sadhana means to, to practice that way. So, as usual with all sadhanas, here with Manjushri, you firstly take refuge. Yeah? And then um, the refuge is uh, very um, uh, profound. Because refuge is the foundation of all Buddhist practices. And so no practice happens without refuge. So it's good to renew your refuge uh, in the space before you. Uh, as an ordinary practitioner, you should feel, see the, uh, the merit field merit field of refuge, Manjushri surround with all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and then you take refuge and recite the refuge prayers. Yeah? So I wouldn't go word for word. Uh, why? Because we don't have much time. Uh, but uh, you got the sadhana. Uh, you you recite the refuge prayer as many times as possible, but not necessarily many is better. But say even few, maybe just three times, but say it very, very mindfully that each time, time you say a word, remember the meanings, feel the emotions, and make it real. I say that three few times, one pointedly as mindfully and one pointed tradition. After you say the refuge prayer, then you renew the bodhicitta. You renew the bodhicitta. You renew the bodhicitta that I'm going to practice this meditation uh, and recitation of Manjushri Mantra in order to reach, ben reach enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And you said it and you do it. And so that's a refuge and bodhicitta. Then, as with sadhana, you, in your heart chakra, you should, as a practitioner, you should always remember a seed syllable in your heart. That's usually hung or in this case, di. And so and then in your heart, then the orange seed syllable D issues rays of light and then invokes all the uh, sh shrine of Manjushri before you. And then you say Om Vajra Samanja. So that's the invocation of Manjushri. And then you pay homage, Namo Guru Be. So that's pay homage to the Guru, Guru Akshobhya because Lord of the family of Manjushri is Akshobhya, yeah? Blue Buddha. So you pay homage to Namo Guru Be, Akshobhya, and then Namo Arya Manjushri Be means I pay homage to the noble uh, Manju Shri Be. Manju means gentle. Gentle means devoid of roughness of the wrong views. Shri is the glorious. One who has the right view is glorious. Be means true. I pay homage to the glorious uh, gentle uh, Lord, Lord gentle one, Lord gentle. Gen so this is paying homage. Then you make the eight offerings. The eight offering is the Om Arya Manjushri. Uh, Arya Manju, Om Arya Manjushri means homage to the holy Manjushri. Sapariwara means along with his retinue. Argam Ahung. So you do the gestures. Argam, drinking water. And then drinking water is to the mouth. This so the sentient beings are, will quench the thirst of knowledge by learning to do Manjushri practice. Arya Manjushri Sapariwara Padim, you offer feet washing water. 
So washing water is given to the feet of the Manjushri so that you, you wash away your dust of pride of any knowledge you have. You know, just because you have Buddhist practice doesn't mean you shouldn't be arrogant. You should still be humble. So no dust of pride is allowed. So therefore feet should be washed. Then Arya Manjushri Saparevare Pushpe, which is flower. So if you have no pride and uh, you have you have learned the Dharma, then you will you will slowly mushroom, blossom some flowers of qualities. Lazy become diligent, angry become compassionate, and a resentful person become forgiving. These are the flowers. We put lots of flowers. Buddhist people put a lot of flowers out there, but main thing they need to blossom the flower within. Anyway, Om Maria Manjushri Sabareware Pushpe Ahung. So you offer flower to Manjushri, a flower to his head. And then you offer incense, dupe, incense to his nose. The aroma of smell is offered so that your practice becomes sincere and unpolluted by, by hypocrisy. Because samsara is full of hypocrisy. But we try to, try to, uh, um, try to sort of uh, smoke away. You use the, use the smoke puja in order to get rid of the smell of, of dishonesty. So one is praying to be to be honest, and then when you say Amariya Manjushri Sabar Aloke Ahung, you're offering lamp, and your thumbs up, you're offering lamp. May there be wisdom, you know. May there be light. Between the two people, where there's a lot of confusion, may there be understanding. May there be understanding. May there be understanding. So you you may there be light. I call you sure light. Yeah, I have a light here, but that doesn't. That light is just symbolic. Real light is bringing awareness that everything is impermanent and uh, everything is uh, uh, not as they appear. They are not independent. They are dependent originated. That's the lamp. That's the lamp. Why put so many barrel lamps? There's no lamp here. Yeah, even if one barrel lamp is bad, good, if you really have lots of lamps up here, remembering the impermanence. You know, don't see someone as same thing you saw yesterday here or oh, last month, that's the lamp. May I, may I be able to lit the lamp? Let there be light that I do not see the person with the same vengeance or anger or judgment anymore. That's a lamp. Okay, Arya Manjushri Sapariwa Gandhi, that's the perfume. The real perfume is faith in the Dharma, not faith in people, status, institution, you know. Uh, all these things. Not Buddha never recommended faith in people. Okay, don't ever have faith in people. Deluded people have deluded, deluded uh, karma. So do not do not worship people. Have faith in the Dharma. Buddha said, rely on the Dharma, not on the person. So if you have have, have faith in the Dharma, you will be sainted. You will be very very perfumed. Your faith will never go low. It will be like a reservoir. So that's why we, we offer Gandhi. Gandhi is perfume. A you, you, per, person who has a faith in the Dharma never become dirty by, by bad mouthing, by rumo, rumors, by judgment of other people. His faith will never be tainted. His faith is in the Dharma. His faith is not in person, not ex unrealistic expectation. So we need to empower ourselves to put faith in the Dharma and karma not in people and the status and, and their, their, their kind of standing in society. They come and go high, low, high, low, good, bad, young, old, friendly one moment, not friendly another moment. These are human beings like that all the time, nothing new. And when we as Arya Manjushri Sabare about it, Navidi, the food, food offering. Buddhists put lots of wonderful food in the shrine. Oh, Buddhists have had them? No. Two days later, you have to take them out. So Buddha is never hungry, so you don't offer food to the Buddha. We are the real hungry people. We have, we eat so much, but still hungry. We're still starving for the wisdom. Yes, all these starving people, <laughs> all these starving people who eat so much, but still hungry. Yeah. So may they meditate. May they do the daily sadhanas, prayers, and reading of Dharma. This is this is offering to the food. Real food is food for thought. The Dharma is the highest food. No side effect. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. 
Do, have, has you, have you got anybody, people who are meditation intolerant to meditation? <laughs> people who are gluten intolerant, you know, lactin intolerant, all this intolerant, yeah, practice Dharma. <laughs> you all, people are still deprived of the real food. They don't have time to feed real food. They have time to go and three hours, you know, Big feast sitting around another twelve noisy people, and then they have a lot of time. They don't have time to do half an hour sadhana. This is the problem. This is the problem. They are hungry, but they don't. They are not really feeding the real food. So when you say Arya Manjushri Sapari, no, may we may we meditate, may we do our sadhanas, may I recite the mantra, may we remember the right view. So we are offering prayer. We're praying, you know. Om Are Manjushri Sabare Vare Shabda, that's the music. So Shabda music means music is to the ears. So it means uh, you know, maybe you, you don't play any musical instruments. You don't play flute, you don't play guitar, you don't play a piano, like me. I don't play any of those things. Uh, but one music we should play is right speech. Right speech. May I practice right speech. May I tell everybody everything's impermanent, everything will change. It's really good, good music, that one. That's a good lyric and it will never go wrong. Everything's impermanent, don't worry, my dear. It will be changed, you know. You know, it's not he, no, it's not you. You didn't do all by yourself. It's all interdependent. Just say that because these are real music, right speech. Tell what is true. Tell what is truly dharmically true. That is the right speech. Right speech is the best musical instruments. Yeah. So that is accumulation merit by making eight offerings from drinking water all the way to music. So these eight offerings are whether you have, if you don't have time, Arya Manjushri Sabari Vare, Argam, Padam, Pushpe, Dupe, Aloge, Gante, Navidi, Shabda, Ahung. You can do the shortened version. If you have a long version and you're very, very, you very have, have good time and don't have, and anything rushing to do, Om Arya Manjushri Sabari Argam Do the mudra, do the movement, gracefully do it meditatively. Very powerfully beautiful. Okay, that's accumulation, paying homage and making offerings. And then the next one is accumulating merit by doing the sevenfold prayers. So this sevenfold prayer is the is the is what we went through empowerment. First is the limb of confession. We need to do daily confession. And uh, if you, uh, you know, six, at least six times you should do confession, not just once. You should do at least six, uh, six times you should confess. Because even then it's not enough. So, you know, whenever you confess, you have got your limb fixed. When you don't confess, you do resent, you're guilty, you judge each other, your limb's broken. So the seven limb means you have to fix your limb by confessing. If you confess to others, they will really feel humbled, they will feel loved by you, they feel respected by you because you're confessing to them. So confession is the first limb. Second is the is limb of rejoicing. Always talk the compliment things, always say the good things about people, the good things about your, your situation. And uh, don't complain, compliment more. Rejoice the Buddha's qualities, rejoice Dharma's quality, rejoice the Sangha's qualities, rejoice all the kindness of your mother, rejoice kindness of the people who have helped you, and rejoice kindness of people who help other people. Talk about how many good people do about each other. That is the limb. It will fix your broken limb. If you are jealous, if you are envious, you are broken limbs. You might do yoga two hours, but you're jealous, finish. What's the point of doing yoga? <laughs> when your actual limb is broken. So, you do the real limb reparation, reparation, that you no longer have jealousy, you no longer have envy, you no longer have uh, self-loathing. That's the limb of limb. Rejoice the merit of others. Second limb. Third is to achieve the attainment of ultimate bodhicitta. Highest purpose is to attain bodhicitta, enlightenment of the Buddha. So that's the, do not have ordinary worldly pursuits. You know, if you have to, you might have short-term goals to do this for this week, this week, next week you have to do this. These things are just, just, just in worldly tasks. But we are not talking about that. The main purpose is to attain enlightenment. 
for the benefit of all sentient beings. Even in a dream, you must remember, may I, uh, Buddhahood, for the benefit of all sentient beings. That's, a, that's the wishing bodhicitta, that's the uh, ultimate bodhicitta, third limb. Fourth is refuge. Refuge in the triple gem. Wow. You know, if, you know, there's no greater virtue than taking refuge. Even you cannot, people study Dharma academically, not a lot of virtue. If they have refuge, and then they study, it's very meritorious. There's lots of people are only intellectually pursuing Dharma, try to practice secular Buddhism without actual refuge in the triple gem. I really pity on them, you know. So refuge is the most important entrance through which you, get, you are entering to the citadel of enlightenment. So renew your refuge every day. Because people are taking refuge in wealth, power, positions, relationships, youth and appearances these are not refuges these are all <laughs> unthin these are untenable these you will be completely exposed to the extreme problems when if you take refuge in those things they are necessary things but they are not ultimate refuge ultimate refuge is the triple gem yeah triple gem so that's the that's the fourth limb and the fifth limb is a uh, is a uh, wishing bodhicitta. Sixth limb is engaging bodhicitta. And the seventh limb is dedicating all of that for the benefit of all sentient beings. So when you repeat the seven limb prayers really, really mindfully, it's the most powerful backbone of my Buddhist rit ritual, ritual and sadhana is the sevenfold prayer. So you do that. So that way you accumulate merit by paying homage, making offerings, and then doing the sevenfold prayers. Then you do the accumulation merit by meditating on the four immeasurables. Immeasurable loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity as expressed by the wording of the four immeasurables. Because being able to wishing have this wish to have loving kindness to others is immeasurably beneficial, you know. Then you will not have ill will. You will no longer have a resentment towards others. If you have loving kindness to others, you will see the wastefulness of the ill will and resentment. And you have compassion to other sentient beings. You are not aggressive. You're not, uh, you're not complaining other people. You're not speaking behind, behind their back because you have compassion for them. So may all be free from sorrow and cause of sorrow. Yeah, because if you do practice uh, compassion, you will, you will learn to remedy their suffering and the cause of suffering. And imagine equal joyfulness, you know, is that you wish the people have a happiness that does not dwindle into sorrow. Most people's uh, happiness are would-be sufferings, you know, because they're attached to worldly things. These worldly things, one moment up, another moment down, and maybe never rise up again. So one should learn how not to get attached to happiness that is like in fact suffering. But one should have happiness from lack of ill will, lack of resentment, uh, suffer, happiness from loss of anger, happiness from loss of, of selfishness. That's a real happiness that will never become sorrowful again. So that's a real joy. And the next time you should say, oh, I'm so joyous today, mum. And mum said, why? Oh, I lost hatred. <laughs> Very good. I lost hatred today. <laughs> and they tell, that's good news. You know, you can have a good party with friends and say, I lost hatred towards someone and I really had done, had enough of it. And that's a joyful day, equanimity. And then equanimity is that you, no matter how much you practice loving kindness, compassion, joyful, still there will be lots of time you could not um, make everything possible and workable with all sentient beings, near ones, dear ones, far ones. You should remain equanimous. You should remain indifferent, not attached even to the near and dear, not too angry even to the far and distant. See them futile and wasteful in, to as invest any time into these two. That is the, uh, what do we call, uh, meditation or equanimity. So these four immeasurables uh, is the one you practice last. After all the refuge, the generation bodhicitta, making offerings, paying homage, and then doing the sevenfold prayer. After all of that is done, you do the meditation on the four immeasurables. So these are accumulation merit. Only when you have this merit to remember and believe in these things, 
it's, you know, sadhana is not just reciting the couple of mantras. You got to remember these fundamental, you know, you know, the cornerstones of the dharma. So you need to practice these four, these things, each sadhana. So that concludes the accumulation merit. Now, now you need to accumulation merit. Wisdom is you need to recite the mantra Om Swabhava Shuddha, Sarva Dharma Swabhava Shuddha. Huh? That is remembering all things are empty of true existence as, as so I too am empty. Uh, or empty means you are light. So, and then out of that state of emptiness, and it says one's heart is like an egg. So you become an your heart is uh, become like a huge globe, you know. Within that is the big syllable palm, and the palm become lotus, because palm is the made out of the Sanskrit word padma. The p and um, um is the vowel, and p is the consonant. So union of con consonant and vowel together, method and wisdom, appears the relative bodhicitta lotus. And uh, the moon disk arises from the syllable A in term of moon disk represents ultimate bodhicitta. So relative uh, represented by eightfold lotus flower, eight petal lotus flower, ultimate bodhicitta represented by the moon disk. So Vajrayana is making this abstract Buddhist concept in a visual dharma. So lotus and moon disk. Upon this is the seed syllable D. The seed syllable D is the seed syllable Manjushri. See, Manjushri is mainly represent, means dara. Dara means to hold. You must hold your mind remembering everything is empty of inherent existence. You know, you know don't forget one thing, that everything is empty. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, D. That's, that's the D. D, 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 D. Means to remember everything is empty, so don't take, don't take, don't take, don't take anything so literally, okay? So that's D. D, D is C syllable of hold. You know the Sanskrit word D comes from the word da, which means to dara, means to hold, vajradara, you know. So that to hold, you have to hold the in your mental retention that everything is empty and everything is, uh, those who don't understand empty, are uh, object of your compassion. So you should show compassion to sentient beings, because sentient beings don't know everything's empty, and they think they are real, and that's what they carry on. They're all the children, all they become childish because. So you must remember that D D is remembering that. So the brilliant orange color syllable D in your heart is color of a burnished gold. Light rays shine from it, and that dispels the darkness of ignorance of sentient. You wouldn't believe how much confusion, how much misunderstanding between two people. They love each other, but they hate, they're confused, they're misunderstanding each other all the time. And no, neither of them can clarify kindly and wisely. It just went to bad to worse, and they are so deluded and so confused and lost in the darkness of what they think is what they think without realizing what actually is. Imagine all of the darkness is dispelled and they have placed them into the real transcendental knowledge. And uh, so the rays of light goes to the world, the blessings of the Buddha's compassion, you know, of knowing the plight of sentient beings, knowing the nature of suffering, knowing the emptiness of suffering and emptiness of sentient beings, and knowledge of that and wisdom. Pride here refers to the pure pride, okay, divine pride, not the ordinary pride. And unimpaired memory means that all the enlightened one has amazing memory, not just of the few difficult ones, they also remember all the good ones. So, no, and also they remember all things impermanent. Everything is empty of true existence. That's an unimpaired memory. You know, some people sit on this kind of quiz show. They can remember names of some, some piano player in 17th century. So what, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling the leg, by the way. So, by the way, if you're in an audience, applaud them. But remember, I'm talking about useful memory, <laughs> useful memory, not just to win a, win a quiz show, but to remember that everything is impermanent, nothing is truly existing, unimpaired memory. That's what we want to have by practicing Manjushri. On all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of ten direction, all gathered in the form and absorbed into the seed syllable D, and then yourself constantly 
instantly manifest in form of youthful bodhisattva manju. Complete transformation of the C syllable D, you become the blessed one, Lord Manjushu. So this is what emptiness become form as a lotus and the D, and the D transforms into emptiness and becomes a deity. So, and the deity is youthful, ever youthful. Why youthful? Because if you remember the right view, you always feel bright and light, you know. <laughs> if, if you don't remember the right view, you age very quickly. <laughs> you age beyond biology. <laughs> If you may remember the right view, you remain youthful. You, you, Manjushri is youthful because, mm, you know, you are remembering the right view. You remember the kindness of other people. You feel bright. Yeah, youthful Manjushri. And uh, the color of the, your color is saffron. The saffron also is youthful saffron, very fresh saffron. Your, your mind is always fresh. You don't see anybody as the same person anymore. Because they're not. <laughs> you know, you see everybody as a young saffron again. Young saffron. And uh, you have one hand, face, two hands. Right hand is holding a flaming sword of wisdom. This is em emptiness. This sword is not to, to stab anybody, okay? Sword is to stab the ego grasping mind. <laughs> if, if you can't find the ego, just gra stab that one with the sword. Yeah? So here is the, you know, self-realization. Realization of no self represent the sword. And your left hand hold a, a book of knowledge which represent perfection and wisdom. You are holding the sword of wisdom because you have studied. You have read the correct book. You have read the perfection of wisdom sutras. You comprehend the meanings and you remember them and you never will forget that everything is but not what appears. So this is the book. The book on your left, left hand, sword in your right hand, are the two things that arms you. You're fully armed, okay? You're fully armed warrior, uh, warrior against the wrong views, yeah? And, uh, you're, and, uh, and you have very long hairs. You are Bodhisattva, Samanda, you are, you are Sambhogakaya manifestation of a Bodhisattva, and your hairs are long, and they are beautifully formed as a tiara, and rest hang beautifully, and uh, you're wearing ornaments, and jewelries, and necklace, and earrings. You're so beautiful because you have right view. <laughs> not because you went to the beautician and spent two hours, you're beautiful. Not like that kind of beautiful. This kind of beauty will fade away within another few hours' time, and they will back to square one, you know, you're... No, the beauty is here, remembering the impermanence, emptiness, selflessness, have compassion to all sentient beings. Then you are always beautiful. You are compassionate to the angry one. That's a beautiful. You are generous to the, to the, to the stingy one. You are, you, are, you are forgiving to the angry one. That's beautiful. So beauty of deities, beauty of elegance of the deities is they, they have these inner qualities of the six parameters. So all the ornaments from the crown to the earrings and necklace all represent the perfection of six parameters. He's 16 year old youth, he's never going to be tired or fatigued or, or, or tired and consumed by activities. No, he's tirelessly, his energy is ever present new ever green energy of Manjushri. And uh, he's seated in the diamond posture. He did remain in the world for the benefit of sentient beings. You are the nature of your color. Your body is not solid. And therefore it says that you're, you're shining like a moon's reflection in the water. And uh, it looks like there's a halo of moon shining from you. With that you visualize on your forehead is Om, White syllable Om represents Verochana. On the throat, red, visualize red syllable A, that represents Amitabha. And the heart represents blue syllable Hong, that's Akshobhya. And on the sun disk. So the moon disk and the lotus and sun disk, respectively, on the forehead, throat, and heart, are the Om A Hong. In the center of the heart chakra, just below the Hong, yeah, you have the Hong already, and just below is a yellow four spoked uh, wisdom chakra with them. Uh, on the moon disk. Uh, to the right of the center uh, of the chakra is a syllable D. 
to the left is R, and then, then and then, so those are the two 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 sides. Then on the four spokes, on the tips of the four spokes are Ra in the front, and then Pa Sa Na clockwise on the four 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 tips of the four four spoke wheel. So that's how you visualize the the mantra rosy. Then light rays issue from this syllable D and then goes out and invoke all the wisdom beings. Now, up to now, you are a symbolic being, Samaya Sattva, and then you've been invoking the wisdom being, and uh, then surrounded by assembly Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they all are invoked, Om Vajra Samanza, then Za Hong Wam Ho, you do the invocation gesture, then both the wisdom being who you invoked, and the symbolic being who you are, become non-duly absorbed into oneself, and then you become the Samadhi Sattva. Now you are the meditative concentration Manjushri. And again, light issues from your seed syllable, syllable D, and invoke the deities of consecration together with the retinue, because you want to be endorsed by the other Buddhas that you are enlightenment, and then Om Vajra Samanza, you make them request by saying Om Abhishin Mam, means uh, requesting to give me empowerment. Then Om Vajra Bhavya Abhishin Hong, the enlightened ones, Takshobe is the, the presiding Buddha, with other five Buddhas, they uh, all pour the water onto you. As one speaks the word Om Vajra Bhavya Hong, the five deities of empowerment, particularly the Akshobhya, uh, bestows the water from his crown, uh, on your crown, and your body is completely filled, all the defilements purified, the water overflow from your head, and it becomes tiny thumb-sized Akshobhya on top of your crown. And then, now, uh, then, um, probably should have a paragraph after that, light rays now shine from the, um, uh, from the wisdom chakra, and the mantra rosy Omara Patsanadi, and then it removes all the removes and cleanses all the impurities of negative karma, and obscuration, deed, ignorance of all sentient beings. Whoever is confused, misunderstanding, or towards each other, between countries, between nations, between races, between neighbors, between two individuals, all imagine all of them are clarified, are purified, which you can just mediate everybody's confusion. And all of them transform into Manjushis, and all the knowledge, love, wisdom of all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, they, they all realize. And then absorb into the seed syllable D and Omara Patanadi in your heart chakra. So then your mind stream becomes completely boosted and augmented and enhanced by all these blessings pouring into your heart. With this in mind, then you recite the mantra. This is the mantra, Om Arapatsanadi. The, the Om Arapatsanadi mantra, uh, Om Arapatsanadi mantra is usually, uh, the, it's nobody usually uh, code, break the, uh, you know, decode the mantras. But I have written down here the etymological meaning of the Manjushri mantra. The Om is the forerunner of all mantras. Om means uh, the homage to the body, holy body, speech, mind. Ah, ah in Sanskrit means anutpana, anutpana, not originated, uncreated. Ah means no, anitya, anathema, anutpana. <laughs> anitya means impermanence. Anatma means no self. Anutpana means un unoriginated, unborn. So the ah of the Arapatsa ah represent unborn nature of all phenomena, selflessness. Then uh, Ra, Ra is the, Ra represents Viraja. Viraja means devoid of dust. So when you realize everything is empty, everything is impermanent, then it is not tainted by the dust thinking it is real, it is permanent, it is truly existing, Ra. Then Ra also meaning, Ra also has another meaning, Raga. Raga means desire. It is not tainted by the dust of craving, desiring things to be permanent, which are impermanent, desiring things to be real, which things are unreal. You are no longer tainted by the desire of the poison. <laughs> no, this is not ordinary desire. Wanting things to be permanent, that is the real dust, real, real desire. Om 
para. Then pa, the pa comes from param artha. Param artha means ultimate truth. Yeah. When your mind realizes everything is impermanent, emptiness, and unoriginated, and you no longer is is uh, is covered by dust of craving, then you will realize param artha. Param artha meaning meaning sacred truth, sacred meaning param artha. Then cha, the word cha, marapa cha, the cha comes from the word achuta. Achuta means freedom from death. Yeah, you have no death. <laughs> you have no rebirth. You are free from birth and death and fear of death and rebirth. You don't even fear your death. You don't even fear losing anything. <laughs> you also fear not getting anything. And there's nothing to gain, nothing to lose. You remember that? <laughs> so, achuta meaning freedom from death. Freedom from death and rebirth. And the na, omara pacha na, na is namachigata. Namach, namachigata. Nama means name. Nama means name. Chigata means uh, devoid of meal being merely labeled. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> you could not be labeled because there is no you. So devoid of being merely labeled. Yeah? Namachigata. Then omara pacha na, di represent the imagery of emptiness. So D is the visual form of emptiness, the essence of enlightenment. So this is the, uh, the, the decoded meaning of Om A Ra Pa Cha Na Di. So you need to recite each of those syllables in the state of emptiness. You don't recite to get things, you know, okay, please don't recite mantra to get things. Okay? <laughs> This recite this mantra to lose things, to lose the grasping, lose the wrong view, lose attachment, <laughs> lose self-importance, and lose the desire, lose craving. This is to mantra to mantra for the loser. Be the best loser here. <laughs> Don't be the best winner, okay? <laughs> so Vajrayana practitioner is not trying to practice to get things. They're trying to lose this weight. They lose the calorie of wrong views that they've been putting on for all these years of overeating. <laughs> oh, overeating the wrong view, you know. So you're trying to lose them. Anyway, so recite Omara Patsanadi, Omara Patsanadi, Omara Patsanadi. This mantra one should recite as much as possible. And as long as your mind is very, remain happy, means bright and aware and clear and light, you know. Then after that, after you recite Omara Patsanadi, whatever, then on, and then at the conclusion, upon your tongue, towards the back of your tongue, lies the orange seed syllable D. Uh, the, the head of the seed syllable D is in, in, in the backwards, in the back, and from the seed syllable, from the seed syllable, light rays shine, and imagine all the faults or failings of your voice, your anger, your ag aggression, you are violent, you are condescending, your negative, harsh language are all purified. And then recite like that in one breath, uh, uh, 108 times. So I don't know whether you got an exact 108 or not, but don't be disappointed if you got more or less. <laughs> but it's not 108. It is the. It is in one breath you need to say. Uh, as much as possible and with the awareness that everything is empty, everything is empty, you are trying to hold that view, you know, hold on to, you know, you got it. one thing you should, you are allowed to hold on to in the right view. And after having said that the in one breath many times, then you, you conclude, Oh, blessed one, having cleared away all sins, obscuration, darkness of delusion of myself and all sins, Please bestow blessings so that special wisdom realize their selflessness may arise in our mind stream. So you're making the final supplication. After that, you make the eight offerings, which are already covered. Then you make the one verse praise. I prostrate to him, means to Manjushi, who possessed the body of a youth, Manjushi, who clears away the darkness of the three realms. Three realms refer to the form realm, desiring, formless realm. 
and who caused the lamp of transcendental wisdom to burn, burn brightly uh, into our hearts, you know. So it's not so much the deity you're looking, external entity waiting to intervene. But when you recite the mantra, you're invoking your own inner awareness to know all things are empty of true existence. Uh, so true existence and then, and then therefore stay youthful. Don't age yourself thinking things are real or permanent or satisfactory and shouldn't be this, shouldn't be that. You should see all things are not, they're meant to be like that. So then you can conclude that with the praise, with the eulogy to Manjushi, this, this uh, hymn to Manjushi, um, which is a very famous story. Um, so I did the oral transmission already. This is a very famous story of this particular verse. There are, there are, there are three, three verses. A story that there, were, there was a very celebrated 500 scholars, Buddhist scholars, under the direction of a, a particular Indian teacher. And his, this teacher was emphasizing his student to pray to Manjushri before they read, before they study, uh, before they discuss. Briefly, they should invoke Manjushri. And then by, by heeding to the teacher's instruction, the student's pro intelligence increased, their memory, their retention, their sharpness, their wit, their wisdom, their, their, their amazing qualities have all increased. Then one day the teacher asked the 500 disciples, he said, now we need to write a very nice hymn. Maybe all of you can write a hymn to Manjushri, and then I will choose the best uh, that we can use in our class together. And so he gave instructions how to give, give instruction to meditate and pray to Manjushri before they recite, write the, their poem. So all of the scholars went home and like assignment and meditated and then went and wrote this praise. And they had all they wrote the praise and then the morning when they came back to the teacher, they all submitted their little assignment, the praise. And the teachers thought he had a great job to, you know, have to sift through all of these and have to choose best out of 100, 500 praises, you know. You know, so it would be quite a take a long time. But teacher's job became very simple because each time he read, they're all identical, word for word, word for word, word for word. And he couldn't believe. They, he doesn't have to choose or eliminate anything. They all are identical. So that is this praise. Kangloma, we call it in Tibetan. Kangloma, Kangilodro. So when we were very young children, they teach us to memorize this. So, Lama Tangumba Jitun Jambe Yangla Chao Salo. And then you say, Kangilodro De Mye De Da Mye Da Nam Da Ra Sa Ve Che Nye That's the praise to a very famous one. It's very blessed one to recite this. Mainly it is praise to Manjushri, who is like a bright, like a sun. It's not talking about Manjushri is looking out there, you can see like a sun. Meaning that when you tune your mind to the right view and remember the emptiness in the right view, then you are bright like a sun. Your own two, two veils, 
two whales means two obscuration, the afflictive whale and cognitive whale. These two obscuration of affliction and uh, obscure knowledge are all, all removed by this uh, realization of emptiness. With most perfect and perfect clarity, see all subject, everything is appearing not truly existing. However many there are, many varieties, and, and he holds a book, Perfection Wisdom, from him, that he tells all nature, all phenomena are empty of true existence. So what is that role of Manjushri is he is he go he is, he disseminate he promotes he propagate this teaching of impermanence emptiness and lack of inherent existence and suffering and so on, uh, what they call three principles of the path or three marks of the path, uh, or four seals of dharma. Uh, all those sentient beings who are caught in the prison of samsara, the things are real, and my suffering is too much. This kind of Prison. So the people have been imprisoned themselves in hatred. They imprison themselves as a, as a resentment. They imprison themselves as hating themselves. So those who are in the prison of the world, we're not talking about prison in the Long Bajaya jail or somewhere like that. We are talking prison of selfishness. Bewildered in the darkness of ignorance, still do not know they are ignorant. Oppressed by very sorrow they themselves have caused. To the crowds of wandering ones, these are sentient beings who are all lost in the thicket of their confusion. He loves them all as to an only child. So Manjushri, ever compassionate one, is Bodhisattva's praise, Bodhisattva's promise to show compassion to all. Possess, so those are quality of Manjushri's mind. Then, possessing 60 tones is called the quality of Manjushri's speech. Manju has, Manjushri has 60 unique tones or melody to to reach and uh, to to benefit saint him his voice like a dragon roaring the teaching of dharma is so wide so vibrant and so uh, distinctively true like a dragon roaring you know this is very kind of tibetan and sino tibetan kind of kind of a mythology the dragon and they think the thunder when you hear the thunder they think that's dragon okay Okay, so anyway, um, is Buddha's Dharma is so loud and so clear, so true, so distinctive. Uh, it wakes everybody from the sleep of defilements from, and then frees them from iron chains of their karma and uh, dispels the darkness and then cuts the root of the sprout of misery with the sword of wisdom discerning emptiness. So that's eulogy to the Manjushri's physical imagery of holding a sword and how it does, he just cut and frees every brow from the thicket of samsara. Then uh, next is the uh, uh, eulogy to his uh, physical appearance as the Sambhogakaya. Pure from the beginning, having gone to the stage, ten stages and ten stages and refers to ten bhumis, meaning bodhisattvas who have reached ten bhumi, and the body of all virtues perfected, so the, the, his Manjushri's whole body is the embodiment of all the qualities. Foremost son of the victorious one, so he's the successor of all the Buddhas, whose form is adorned with ornaments. Yeah, B Manjushri's body is completely covered with ornaments. Ten times ten is hundred and twelve. Hundred and twelve means thirty-two major plus eighty minor marks. Those so 32 plus 80 is 112. So <laughs> that's math. We're doing the Buddhist math here. Make sure that all the things of seven, things are eight, things are 12, you get them all together. So those 32 major marks and 80 minor marks makes 10 times 10 and 12. So this is a eulogy is a metered version. So that's why make clear our minds in darkness. Manju Gosha to you, I bow down. So here that 500 Indian scholars all unanimously wrote in their prayer and they're all blessed to have the same word for word identical. Can you believe it? In the West, if people were set an exam, examination, wrote like they think, who plagiarized this? <laughs> there's, there's no plagiarism here. Nobody copied from everybody. Everybody meditated and they all have the same wording. Can you believe it? So that is followed by the 
invocation of Manjushri. With the brilliance of your wisdom or compassion, illumine the darkness enclosing my mind, enlighten my intelligence wisdom, so that I may gain insight into the Buddha's words and texts explained there. So usually people recite this hymn to Manjushri and the invocation Manjushri before they start the class. Whether the class is language or music or, or Dharma, of course, they usually always study like that. And not only that, you should also read a book. If you're doing some study, you should read this praise to Manjushri and then recite the Omara Patsanadi maybe a little bit, and then you can read. Then you can st start, you know. I'm sure your subject that you study will come much quickly to you because you are able to do this. So this is my strong recommendation. Even those you don't have a lot of time to do, remember the right view, impermanence, bodhicitta, and uh, don't do ill will, uh, don't do aggression, don't do covetousness, but just do this. <laughs> just do this. <laughs> Simple. Sadhana is just do this, you know. Don't do that and do this. Don't do the bad stuff, do the good. And, uh, and remember Manjushri. Remember our fellowship. Remember Sakya friends create this opportunity for you to meet and greet Bodhisattva Manjushri in you. Now, from here onwards, you listen to your heart. Don't listen to your head. <laughs> if you listen to your heart, you will, you will be gentle. You will be soft. You will pause for a cause. If you listen to your head, you would not listen. You will not pause. You will just become, oh, close your eyes, open your mouth, jump into the cliff. And people have done that so many times. So, have a gentleness of youthful Manjushri. Pause for a cause. Watch your mouth. Watch your thought. Watch your deed. Watch you, what are you doing. And always fear the consequences. And always do something that will have benefit to other sentient beings. If you're doing that, that is sadhana. That is a practice. Whether you read this little prayer each day or not, from uh, one page, one, two page, whatever, that's not really, really, that's fairly, fairly, fairly academic. But main thing is pause here and there every now and then. Remember Manjushri. Always carry a small locket of Manjushri wherever you go. Have a, have a portable shrine. To take Manjushri small with you. Shakyamuni Buddha with you. And remember the right view. And always pay homage. And don't make hasty decisions. Always think of what's the, what's the right, what is a compassionate thing to do. And console your heart. And there you will pay heed to your good heart. And Manjushri is waiting as, as like an indwelling uh, Buddha in you, waiting to be awakened. So with this we have concluded the um, a short uh, explanation of the Manjushri Sadhana. Uh, followed uh, after we have done the Manjushri Empowerment which all of you have uh, attended very, very um, diligently. I'd like to thank you all. Uh, now we're going to do the dedication of marriage because you have given your time, um, uh, nearly three hours, and, uh, and we're going to dedicate here uh, so that uh, um, we, we should remember a lot of people out there. So many people have recent weeks have killed in in terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria. I couldn't bear watching those news. How unfortunate that is. Not to mention many people exposed to se severe violence and aggression, a war and the natural disasters on top of their personal sickness and other difficulties. So spare a couple of moments of thoughts and compassion and dedicate that our receiving this empowerment will greatly uh, boost the peace and understanding and, and uh, sanity may return in the minds of sentient beings. So with this in mind, we'll do the dedication of merits. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
erenda mahaya na jeje vadeva mere rahe vega me ho be bega zala vaza to ho da mahaya na jeje kare ja manju shenyo vade asama da bada de laiwa palo ve o de zamba aja de de ke o de mere me de he sale bodi ji da te ba ve de na ya da za ve has been bo me So thank you very much everyone. So as I mentioned uh tomorrow night's uh, teachings on the parting from four attachments is very teaching by Manjushri. These teachings are how to part, how to be become free from the wrong views. So Manjushri is how to soften your mind devoid of the roughness of the wrong views. So we need to polish them. We need to use this duster. We need to what do you call you know dusting paper or something. You need to have rough you know you need to smooth the rough edges. So when you have heard the teachings on the how to part from the wrong views, then your youthfulness, your vibrantness, your fitness to not get attached to impermanent things as a permanent will greatly boost it. So that's why we deliberately planned. so that the this uh, manjushri's empowerment will definitely empower you to greatly boost your understanding of the uh, of the par- how to part from the four attachments just to name a few so that's our subject tomorrow night thank you very much um i am very happy that you can all you have all have given your valuable time uh, to listen uh to bodhisattva manjushri's uh amazing teachings and uh i have been able to uh, function as a conduit through which the wire of living wire of manjushri has been connected now to you now the power is on uh, so please stay tuned thank you very much thank you particularly of all our our, our very hard working translators uh i have sorry if i have been uh, sprinting a little bit there <laughs> thank you very much